everyone. Havoc Rock. Ah, Havoc Rock. I'm too used to uh, Havoc. Anyway, uh, Basil. I can't freaking talk. Basil here from Techno Talk uh, with Java Tutorial 8, and um, I haven't done one of these in a long time, over a month. Uh, I like was when tutorial seven was. I posted also about a month ago a an After Effects tutorial about how to make it snow, and you know, um, yeah, it, it people seem to like the After Effects stuff, so I'm definitely gonna do more of those. I just haven't really been editing much lately. There is the project I'm planning on working on soon, so I'll definitely um rec uh, record some tutorials for how I'm doing that. Uh, in terms of Java, the reason I've been uh, a little bit slow in it recently is because I'm trying to get Windows seven on my Mac here because I really do not like programming in Mac OS I mean Macs are really good in some things especially with editing like all my Adobe programs um, they they work like a charm like there's no way you could get that on a PC but at the same time programming and um, stuff like that is always uh, seems seems better to me on PC but uh, that's no reason to get into the tutorials now it's been a long time since I've done one of these but I was looking at the ones that I had already done and I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go from there in terms of basic tutorials I guess I should cover arrays in this video so that's what I'm going to do so um, in tutorials our little project we're gonna cr create a new class we're gonna call it array. I already have an arrays. Um, I'll just call it array then. So we have public class array, and we're gonna be working in the main method as always. Don't know why I didn't construct this. Um, what is wrong with me? I'm typing so slow. I think I'm. Oh my god! All right. So arrays. Now. So far, what we've learned in terms of uh, programming with variables and different data types is that you know if you want to create uh, multiple variables, for example, say you want to create multiple strings, you know you could say string and then okay, string x, string y, string z, string w, and you know there's what, the, what those are going to be, um, and then you could obviously assign values to them individually. Now the thing is that say you don't only have four variables, say you have a lot of different types. Um, a lot of different uh, sets of data, a lot of um, data that you want to have, that you want to program with, and if you just use a different variable and you know a different, um, you to define it each individually and get all that done, your program be ends up becoming very cluttered, very difficult to edit, very difficult to organize, and very difficult to get right the first time. So the thing about arrays is that it's pretty much um, a simple way of creating a set of values. They all have to be the same data type, but taking a set of values and putting them into one thing. It's like, you know, matrices in algebra. Um, I mean, hopefully you do. I don't know how old you guys, if you know about matrices, but um, pretty much what is a matrix? Uh, think of a vector, like a one-row like a one row matrix. That's like a, a, an array. I mean, you're holding more than one variable, one, more than one value, sorry, in one set or one matrix or one array. And then also, um, there's multidimensional arrays, which, you know, is more traditional matrices. And you can do operations with these. You can um, use them to store data in databases. They're really useful when you get to higher levels of programming than simple things that we've been doing. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to create it. So say I want to create an, uh, an array of values, an array of integers, for example. So remember, you can only have one type of da uh, one data type, one type of uh, variable in an array. So you can't have like three integers and one string in a single array. You can't do that. So you would say int. Now, if you wanted to create a regular variable um, x, for example, you would say int x, right, and set it equal to um, uh, whatever value you want, twelve or whatever. When you're creating a matrix, instead of I mean, not a matrix, I keep saying matrix. Say when you're creating an array, instead of saying int x. You would have to say int and then have a open and close brackets. That stands for that, that's signifying the array, and then x. And x is still the name of the array, so you could obviously call this anything, you know. Just call it x for now. And then when you're assigning it a value, unlike a, a regular integer where you just give it like twelve a number, um, because this is this is a set, you would need uh, brackets, not bracket. What's it called uh, braces? Those little squiggly brackets to uh, show that you're creating a set of values and then say your integers are going to be 1, 4, 7, and 9 so you would separate with, the, with them with commas 1, 4, 7, 9 and then end it with a semicolon and this right here has created the array x and 
with one line, instead of having to create different variables for each one of these values, different integer variables, you have one variable, one array, has all four values in it. And you can even do more. You can create uh, what are called multidimensional arrays. I mean, say you don't want one long line of, uh, of values that you want to organize it into rows, for example, like a matrix. Um, the only difference that you'd have to do is that here, this uh, beginning, these open and close brackets here are declaring, you know, if you're going to just create one set, like one uh, row, like a vector. So you'd have to create another set of brackets um, to show to show that it's going to be a, uh, a multi-dimensional array and then you have to put brackets around your existing set and then you would put a comma and then another set of brackets so now you have one set these two braces um, this one and this one which is encompassing the entire array all the values inside the array and then within it you have other um, sets which are surrounded by braces that'll show like for this other one for example you could put 3802 for example so here what we've done is that if you wanted to picture this like algebraically for example um, you have just created the matrix that looks like this well, you know, so these are your brackets. You have 1, 4, 7, 9, and you have 3, 8, 0, 2. So that's just to look at it conceptually. This is pretty much the array that you just created. Um, and, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, what it's done. And the reason that arrays, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little spacing out right now. The reason that arrays can be so useful is because think about um, what you can do with this now. Uh, say you want to categorize things, like... Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Why am I totally spacing out? I, I, I taught you about arrays. I taught you how to make single-dimensional arrays and multi-dimensional arrays. I feel like there's something I'm missing, something I'm forgetting. Um, maybe practical use? Well, uh, think well. Okay, so let's create a string array. Let's just have uh, has it be one set. Call it um, a. And within this array, what we want to have is we want to have. Let's see. This is going to be string Basil. It's my name. So what's going to be in this array is going to be uh, facts about me. So say this was in a database. You had information on people. Um, so let's see age, um, occupation, oh, these need to be, actually, yeah, okay, these need to be in, uh, since it's a string array, these need to be in quotation marks, because all strings, all string values are in quotations, and let's say one more thing, so age, occupation, and I feel like this isn't working. Actually, no, no, no this will work. Um, oh, sorry, it's late, guys. Okay, so age, occupation, and one more thing. Race. Brown. <laughs> That's my race, all right? Okay, so bear with me. So say now we had system out dot print line. What is Basil's occupation? So that's the question that we're asking. And in order to respond to that, wait. Oh my God! What is the hell is wrong with me? So you would need some input in this case. So import Java .util. This this kind of this row kind of went down the drain, but I'm not restarting. So if you think I'm doing a bad job, you're probably right. All right. So now we have scanner scan equals new scanner system dot in old stuff that you guys already know. And now we're gonna have string question I don't know I'm, I should really prepare my tutorials ahead of time but I'm kinda just making this up as I go along scan dot next line so that's this is gonna ask for our input 
and <clears throat> if question equals occupation then system dot out dot print line why is this giving me an error okay just kidding it was lagging and then in here you would just have now the thing about this array is that if you were to look at this um in terms of like okay how would you say these everything starts counting from zero so like this is value one value two value three but in java terms this would be value zero value one value two and you express that value using this the little bracket so if you wanted to print the occupation this would be value one of the array so in the print line you would have brackets and inside of it well you would have actually basil so the name of the array and then brackets and a one so this is saying Okay, so look at the array basil, because we have two arrays here, right? But look at the array basil, and then look at p uh, value 1 of that array, which is this, because this is 0, remember? So I'm, we could do it for the rest of them, but I don't really feel like it. So let's run this, and it asks for our input. So say we, say we ask it for occupation, it would tell us student, because it's taking position 1. And uh, in, in a multidimensional array, in term, uh, in order to get uh, name the values, god damn it, you would have x, and then you'd have two brackets, obviously, because just think about it, it's simple. If it's a single dimensional array, it has one bracket, so you only need one bracket. Multi dimensional needs two. The first bracket would be the row, so remember how the matrix looks. So this would be row one, and this would be row two, except that it's, remember, start from zero, so this is actually row zero and row one. So say we wanted to print nine. Or say we just want to take the the value nine, it would be row zero, and position zero one two three, not four three. So this is saying look at this value. So we could um, copy that system dot out dot print line. Random stuff, and just have it print x or just copy and paste so we wanted to print that so again we run the program ask for occupation and then just for the hell of it it's, I'm showing you that it also gives you 9 for this value and I think this is running a little uh, long of a tutorial probably because I spent half the tutorial in silence half the tutorial stuttering my way through it uh, <laughs> I'll definitely be continuing this series though, so don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in programming and want to learn more stuff. I've recently been um, trying to go into some of the basics of C++. I'm thinking about learning some MATLAB, etc. And I'm also going to have some more After Effects and um, possibly some Photoshop, though I'm not very good with it, tutorials up in the future. Thanks for watching. This has been Basil from Technotalk. See you next time.